Ramon Ray with Smart Hustle Magazine and Infusionsoft. And who are you and who do you work for? I'm Danielle Baskin and I work for Bell Helmets, which is my company that I started. Awesome. And what is Bell Helmets? I mean, I get an idea here. I'm in your beautiful uh, workspace, yeah. but what is it? Yeah, it's a, it's beautiful helmets. So I design uh, the aesthetics of bike helmets and all kinds of helmets so that people will want to wear them. Um, because as uh, cycling is getting more popular, more people need helmets, but people in in cities and everywhere are really fashion conscious, and so I'm making helmets that kind of fit with people's styles and personalities. But when I went to buy helmets for my daughter, they had a pink helmet, a blue helmet, and a black helmet. Isn't that enough for people? I mean, I'm just teasing you. <laughs> but, you know, but tell me more about it. Um, so a helmet is kind of, it's interesting because if you ride a bike, right. your helmet after you locked up your bike, your helmet is like on you for the whole day. It's on your desk and it doesn't make any sense that that object that you're carrying with you and that's always near you isn't a personal object. So um, to, to, uh, to just get like the standard helmet is this kind of like strange, like utilitarian thing you have yeah. to carry around with you. So yeah, I think that helmets need more attention. I love it. And then tell me how you started, meaning, um, so I get the reasoning now for it. Tell me what, what was the journey? Were you a dog walker or a corporate lawyer? And then you said, you know what? I want to paint helmets. What's the journey? How did you get there and why? Actually, um, so I actually uh, started this when I was 19. Okay. And um, I was riding a bike to commute to college, and uh, I never wore a helmet when I was younger because I just thought they were dorky and bulky. Um, and I just painted my own helmet, and I kind of, my first design was a sky. So I did that kind of as a joke so that the helmet would look invisible. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, okay. yeah, I did like a daytime sky with clouds, and then I varnished it just so that it would reflect the sun, so it'd be shiny. But then I realized that that combination like sealed it really well. Like it was kind of an accident. And um, when I wore it, people asked me where it came from. So I realized, oh, this is actually not an invisible helmet. I'm getting attention from this helmet, and people want to know where to get one themselves. And then I made more to where I wore different designs. Mm -hmm. I wore like a sunset sky, and I mm -hmm. like different times of day in wood grain, and then I did them for friends. So it kind of like. Um, slowly built up my collection, but I really just made it not with the intention to like start a business, but just because I thought helmets sucked and I wanted um, better options. Mm -hmm. And um, then kind of um, heard enough feedback where I knew, oh, I really should set up a site so people can access these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. And then when did it turn from a hobby and just Danielle just chilling, just just doing something in her garage? When did it turn from a hobby to like, you know what? This is a business. This is serious. How did how did you make that shift? Oh, that happened like instantly. Like I kind of knew as soon as I got feedback, I knew to to uh, turn it into business. I've had businesses my whole life, so okay, I have okay. actually have like so this is my helmet business, but I also like rent out tricycles, and I just I'm very uh, I try to turn every idea yes. into a business. Okay. So that happened kind of quickly. Um, what was slow was like creating the website and doing SEO and getting people to find me out. Which is, which is the challenge of many small businesses. Yeah. yeah, like I kind of had a hunch, oh, there's a huge market for this. Um, cycling is getting really popular suddenly. Like it used to, I don't know, in the last eight years, it kind of became really mainstream where like now fashion brands have like bicycles in right. their windows and, and there's bike share now, there wasn't bike share before. Um, so I knew that there was a huge market, but I didn't really know, like, how can I get someone in Berlin to find my helmet? How can I get someone in San Francisco to find my helmet? How do I get into bike shops? And so that's what took years to kind of build. And how long have you been doing this? Uh, so now, so I've had this company for almost six years. Okay. Yeah. And, then, and let's talk about that, the marketing. How do you get people down the block to know that they don't have to get just black helmets or pink helmets? And how do you get people in Germany to know about this? Going to the marketing, how, in, how did you do it? And in general, what are some tips for small businesses that, that are building a business? How do they get the word out? How have you done it? Um, so the internet's important. Um, and at first what I was doing is I was emailing all these bike blogs, just whatever came up in like the first page of Google for like bike blogs in different cities. And I just emailed them, um, not really with the request to write about my work, but more like, hey, check this out. Right. Simple link, check this out, an image, 
like not a long pitch mm -hmm. um, just like oh I'm I think you might genuinely be interested in this and some people responded some people posted posted about it and then some people like asked for a helmet in exchange for a post which I at the beginning I was kind of uh, totally okay with giving out work for free it, it depends on I, what yeah. size their list is I think yeah, yeah. I and mean, when you're starting out, yeah, there's a lot of work. Where you won't get paid <laughs> for your work at first, but um, it's an investment, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, my website started getting traction, and it just, like, keeps growing, and then kind of just, like, organically, the people read these blogs and repost it, yes. and so... Um, and this is all before, I think right now, like, a way I find customers is, like, Twitter and Instagram, but that really, when I first started, it was it was more like just Google search, mm -hmm. yeah. And are you now looking for, as far as the marketing, is there any one better than you finding a customer to buy a helmet, or are you looking more so for that blog or that press, that influencer, or both? You know, because you go one by one will be a slow journey, it seems, but getting big gulps will be a little faster. Tell me how that works. Um, huh, it's both. I mean, I, I sometimes just, if I have my helmet and I'm at the grocery store and someone asks me where it came from, I talk about my company, yeah. so I just find a random individual or I'm reaching out to um, hotels to get 20 helmets for all their guests. So it's kind okay, of a range okay. from just like any person to like a big company. And I try to keep like the same, um, huh. like I'm communicating with both a corporation and then someone in a small town in the middle of a state about painting their pet right. portrait on a helmet, but also okay. doing logos. And I try to keep the same like personal uh, connection to my customer regardless of like where they're coming from yeah and do you have a team that works with you or are you the solo marketer financier and etc or tell me about the company itself oh. how you're growing or what your plans are tell me about that okay so yeah right now I do absolutely everything okay. um, yeah I do my best to like update my site reach out to customers and then also paint everything varnish everything ship everything um, but I am looking for it a team. Um, you know, I've been trying out different painters and slowly training people now so that when I get a big order I can handle it. The tricky thing is having space in New York. I think it's important that I'm based in New York, but it's really hard to find space, especially if you, I mean, my office really only fits one person, right. barely, like it's kind we, of a safety hazard. That. We can see that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a ladder, like, yeah, I have to crawl under my right, desk right, to get right. to certain parts of the office. Um, so to have someone else in here, and also I don't want, I have my own organizational yeah. system, especially with painting, I think like, oh, if I have a team of painters, they need their own brushes. We can't share yes, yes. T tools because you know what mm -hmm. each brush does and it's like a personal thing. Mm -hmm. It's like sh you can't share computers. Right. Um, so yeah i don't i'm trying to figure out how to how to scale right now i mean right right now my strategy is to wait for people to leave at night and then train train uh, new team members out in the main space right. of my co-working space and that's a hustle i like that that's yeah, a hustle. it's not practical for long term like oh can you oh wait so so people are working here can you come in at like 8 p.m and stay till 10 p.m um so i'm trying to do that but that's not practical like for the I mean, I have really crazy hours, and every day is a puzzle, and that's not practical for, like, smooth, smoothly scaling, yeah. Is that the biggest scaling right now, meaning at this stage, you don't really need a marketer or a biz dev, you need people to help produce the product more, is that the big, biggest thing right now? So, I should be doing more marketing and biz dev, because I actually think, I th I'm the only person doing this kind of work. Um, if, you're, if you search for custom helmets, then I'm going to pop up, because um, all other manufacturers do their do their customization in China and it's like a minimum of 2000 and they're doing it on a machine and because helmets are so weirdly shaped a lot of printing vectors comes out funky unless you're applying yes. it with like decals and stuff but that's a labor intensive process and i kind of know what materials to use um, so I think that there's a huge market for it, and I'm getting a lot of traffic organically, and people are reaching out to me, and it's steady and growing. But I think if I did have someone doing biz dev and marketing, it would like yes. it would escalate a lot, and I'm not doing any of that. I should be reaching out. But, to but then you'd have to hire the also get your team to make the helmets too. That's the catch. yes, exactly. And this all op I like see I can foresee this happening, and I actually I really like um uh like figuring out how to make things and and doing um, uh, like running the process and so 
I have ideas for like, oh, like a like a box with fans that would drive, like speed it up. I have all this technology oh, in mind, yes. and I know how to, how to build this. The issue is, and um, I haven't investigated this. Like I've had no uh, funding or anything. Anything. I just like you know, at first just spent all my money on mm -hmm. helmets and like was not for profit right, right. at the beginning. Um, but it's tricky to scale without having some backer like really like okay so I could get a biz dev person get a team build stuff but I can't do that right now unless I Thanks. unless I get a big order in yeah. place yeah. or get some funding okay. or partner with another helmet company which is tricky that, that whole sporting goods world is very it, I've learned a lot about the sporting goods world which I did, didn't expect to uh, delve into but it's a it's a it's an interesting uh, business, yeah. No, I love it. Last two points, Danielle, and then I, anything I didn't ask you, feel free to uh, ask me. Um, let's talk about the hustle. We've already hinted on it. You know, hotels, and you're in the in the grocery line, and people are doing it. But anything that you can think, wow, Ramon, here's how I got an order because I really had to do something different or hustle. Yeah. And then I want to ask you for advice for others, which okay. you've given already. But about the hustle, anything that comes to mind? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a big hustler. Um, so, well, I'll talk briefly about... So I have another business renting Please. out. Yeah. I rent, I have like a giant cargo tricycle yeah. that I was using to transport stuff from storage to my studio. And to clarify, tell people, what is a cargo tricycle? I have no clue what that is. It's a tricycle with a, it's like a, so like ice cream men in the 60s oh, used to ride okay. around with a tricycle with a giant uh, flatbed Got front. Um, Got it. And it's like a, like a four foot by two and a half mm -hmm. foot tray, right? But I've built um, like crates and, di and a display, and um, after using it to transport stuff, I started selling helmets out of it. But then I realized people really like the tricycle, so then I tried to rent out the tricycle to other companies, which is working. Mm -hmm. So my two companies, like helmets and tricycles, kind of like uh -huh. work um, in conjunction with each other, where I can do cross promotion among my own. Companies. Peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. Um, so uh, you asked me about advice, right? Okay. Your hustle. Any more about the hustle and then advice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think um, huh, I think hustling is really natural when you want that thing to exist for yourself and then you're really excited how it helped you and then you express that to someone else. Um, so I was really excited for my tricycle company. It helped me sell my helmets because the tricycle itself was so striking. And so because I experience that firsthand I can easily sell the tricycle to another company because I know that it works mm -hmm. so yeah it's really important if you're if you have any idea that you yourself are convinced and excited about it working mm. so <laughs> like, if you're not excited yeah like you can't yeah so if you're not fully convinced or if you yourself will, will not use that product it's really hard maybe it is a good idea but it is hard to sell it right um, I mean there's a lot of there's things I've created that uh, I probably won't use that much. Like I, this is another company I have. <laughs> I have like I have um, uh, phone mounts for city bike. So you put your nice. Okay. Okay. And, and tell tell us what it is again. I talked to you. Tell us what it is again. Oh, it's um. So you put your phone in this. Yeah. Um, this isn't fully constructed. You put your phone in this, and it, and then there's bungee cord that yeah. goes around, and it actually connects to the the weird shaped handlebars of all the bike share programs nice. um, so that you could use GPS because all the other phone mounts that um, are for bikes are just for cylinders and the mm. bike share handlebars are wider. So this is the, the only um, phone mount that works. Anyway, I'm never a lot, like I don't need to use this in New York. So I don't, like I'm not promoting it that much because I I myself am not that excited about it. I know that it's, I know that it should exist, but it's hard to do. So I think, um, like maybe if you have a great idea, you should find the person that is that it helps the most and have them <laughs> try to sell yeah. it. Like I think that it's so important to have a personal connection to the thing you want other people to use too. That's awesome. Yeah. I had to take the risk of quitting other things to do this full time, which was a financial risk because I didn't have the security of another job. And I think it was a really good move because all of the energy you're putting into something that you're that isn't your own project um, that you're not that excited about 
uh, is taking away, and then if you're also r running something on the side, it's really taking away um, how seriously you take your own company. And so it's, I think it's good to totally eliminate that so that you can refocus all your energies on, on building your own company and then pretend that there is a boss or like pretend, like you have to stage that e your organization is real. Right, <laughs> I, I understand. Yeah. And, and I've been through that, Danielle. I used, to, I used to work at the United Nations until I was fired. Um, so I know what it's like to have a proverbial gun or a, a, something to your head. A bad example, but something where it's pressuring you to, to make it happen. So I know how you feel. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And now, what do you say for the person who has a full-time job? They're making 35000 50000 60000 a year. They need to pay rent. They need to eat. Danielle, are you saying, I'm going to leave my job today? When do you know? When can you leave your job and do your passion, which can be a business? When do you do that? And my thoughts on it are really when you need to save money or, or something because it, yeah. if you have children especially are the expenses. So. It's really tricky. You know, I couldn't really afford this office when I moved into it, but I did it at a point where just that month I got lucky and got a lot of sales. I don't know. It's a lot of luck. It's like, okay, you see an uptick in sales or attention or whatever your goals are that's giving you some money and at that exact time that you have some flow like act on it and invest in it but hope I mean hope that the momentum um, continues but there's t there's times like if you're first starting out and you see a decline in sales or whatever it doesn't necessarily reflect that your product is bad there's just off weeks or people aren't aren't opening you I don't know the, the world is, is mysterious um, but uh, during those times, it's good to just pursue others, to, like have other options, like don't totally sever your ties with your former employer. Maybe if you have a full-time job, explain that you really are passionate about this idea, but you want to do like contract work or like kind of still, or part, or like switch to part-time so you're not just like suddenly like, I don't care, I don't care about your company, I want to do my own thing. Like don't act like that, you should just say like, Oh, I'm real. I'm really excited about this other thing, but I want to work for you too. How can we like, you know, how can I work fewer hours? Um, and so then you'll still have like a backup to go to. But yeah, it's tricky. I mean, a lot of oh, for for all companies, it's a mixture of of hard work, but also there's a lot of luck involved. Yeah, no, yeah. serendipity and luck is for sure. So, um, anything else? But that's all the questions I have. I always give people a chance. Anything else that's on your mind? Um. No, unless you have more questions. <laughs> okay, great. So uh, this is Ramon Ray with Smart Hustle Magazine. And once again, what's your name and who do you work for? Danielle Baskin from Bell Helmets. Awesome. Thank you, Danielle. Yeah.